Number seven, the perfect promises that God has given to every one of His children. In verse three, we have the seventh promise, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness. And as I was studying this particular message, I don't mind telling you that I found some treasures. I'm not talking about silver and gold, but I'm talking about the truths of God's eternal Word. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 20. And I want to read just one verse of Scripture to you, verse 21. When Moses was up on the mountaintop, when God gave him the Ten Commandments, I want you to listen to this 21st verse. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. I like this. The people followed afar off, but Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. God was right in the midst of that thick darkness, and He gave him a revelation from Deuteronomy chapter 5. It says, And the Lord talked with Moses face to face in the mount out of the midst. God had a personal confrontation with Moses face to face. He talked to the people in similitudes, but when he talked to Moses, he talked to him in the thick darkness face to face. Nobody ever talked to God like this. This is one of the great treasures of darkness when you're alone. Not when you're under the tent where there's thousands of people when we're talking to God and praying. But when you get alone in your closet, there's nobody there but you and God. In that darkness is where you meet God and you'll find treasures like you'll never find before. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me somebody? He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness. In Isaiah chapter 45, I've been using this as a text in verse 7. Let me read this. God said, I form the light and I create darkness. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 27, if you have your Bible, let me read it to you, please. Jesus, if you have the Gospels with the words of Jesus in red. This 27th verse is in red. And Jesus is talking not only to His disciples, but He's talking to you and to me. He said, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. Oh, I love this. In other words, God is letting us know that when we get alone with Him, nobody's allowed into His presence. You're, of, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. But when you separate yourself and get alone with God, He said, what you hear in the darkness, that speak you in the light. God talks to His people when they are in the darkness. Can you shout amen with me, somebody? You that are listening to this broadcast, I want you to know there are four treasures. There's a fourfold treasure, and I'm going to break it down in fours on this last point. There are fourfold treasures in darkness. And the first one is that you get a revelation of God. This is a treasure that you can only find for yourself. And you have to find Him for yourself. A revelation. I look this word up in the dictionary. And another word which means the same thing is an unveiling. Or an uncovering. Taking the cover off. A mystery. God said, I will unveil the truths. Paul said, it's been given unto me to show you the hidden mysteries. And when you get alone with God, God loves to give 
give you a revelation of truth to open your understanding and illumine your mind and your heart so that you can know the truth. For you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me somebody? And you can only find it in the hidden darkness. When you get alone with God, He'll give you a revelation like you've never had before. Too many people in the church today, when you talk to them about being a child of God, all they can think of is, is joining a church, putting their name on a church book, shaking a preacher's hand. But I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about a hidden mystery. I want you to know this is not a social gathering, but I want you to know that Jesus Christ has given us a revelation of Calvary. He was crucified 2,000 years years ago. He was dead. He was buried. But the grave couldn't hold him. I'll tell you, on the third day, he come out of that grave and he said, now I live in you. I walk in you. And I talk in you. You are my children and I am your God. This is the mystery that he's given to every one of us. Paul had this mystery when he says, Christ in you. The hope of glory. This is one of the greatest revelations of truth that we can find. God is coming back for a people, a church. I'm talking about a bride without a spot. A bride without, without a spot or a wrinkle. A bride that is holy, without a blemish, that He might present it unto Himself. I've had people come to me when I was a pastor in a church, especially a young lady. She came to me and she said, Brother Shambach, I'm not coming back to church any longer. She said, I can't live this life and I'm not going to be no hypocrite. I'm in high school. There's too many demands coming against me and I just can't live this life. And I invited her into my study and I said, sit down. I want to talk to you, girl. I looked across my desk and I said, what would you say if I told you I can't live this life? She said, what? You're the pastor. You're the preacher. I said, yes, but years ago I got a revelation from God. I said, if you could live this life, Jesus never would have needed to have died on Calvary. But the revelation that I got from God is that I found somebody that lived this life. He lived it from the cradle to the grave and then destroyed death and rose again. And now He has multiplied Himself hundreds of thousands of times over and I invited Him, the one that has lived this life, to come on the inside of me. And He said, I'll live in you and I'll talk in you. I come to town to tell you you can be victorious. It's not you that's going to live holy, but it's going to be the Christ that walks on the inside of you. He said, I'll live in you. I'll talk in you. I'll be your God, and you shall be my people. This is the greatest revelation of truth that we can find. And thank God you can find this great treasure when you are alone with God to let you realize that I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth within me. Ah, this is the secret of Christian living. I must be crucified. And you have to identify yourself with Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. When Jesus died, Shambach died with him. When he was buried, Shambach was buried with him. But thank God the grave couldn't hold him. And on the third day, he came out of the grave. And because Jesus lives, Shambach lives with him. But it's no longer Shambach that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth on the inside. And this is the greatest revelation of truth that you can find that you have. The hidden treasure that you receive in darkness. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me, everybody? I'm reading from the 45th chapter of Isaiah. The first verse, I'm still using this as a text. Thus saith the Lord to His anointed. And I'm still on that seventh point from the third verse. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Not only does God give us a treasure of revelation, 
We have a revelation of God. But there's a second thing that we receive. We will be able to hear the voice of God. Are you listening to me? And this is one of the hidden treasures that you can find only in darkness. The voice of God. Some Christians don't know the voice of God. They don't know when God speaks, whether it's God talking or the devil talking. We are living in a confused time because you haven't spent much time in darkness with your God. This is one of the hidden treasures. And I was reading the third chapter of 1 Samuel when Samuel was a lad. Let me share some of it with you. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, Samuel was laid down to sleep that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here am I he ran unto Eli remember now Samuel was a little boy and he ran into Eli and he said here I am what do you want Eli said what's wrong with you boy go on back to bed I didn't call you and he went back to sleep again and he heard a voice. It was God talking to him. I'm talking about a mere lad, if you will, please. Thank God for young people that can hear the voice of God. However, this was the first, the second time that he heard God's voice. But he didn't know it was God talking. Samuel, he said, here am I. And he got up out of bed and ran into Eli's room again and said, Here I am. What do you want? He said, What's wrong with you, boy? Go on back to bed. Stop bothering me. And Samuel went back again. And the third time, he heard the voice again. And he said, Here I am. What do you want? And he jumped out of bed and ran into Eli's room. And finally, Eli wised up. Sometimes even prophets can get dim. Are you listening to me? Even preachers can get dull. Can't even tell when God's talking to folks. We run them on a wild goose chase. Are you listening to me? And finally Eli said, Oh Lord, it's God talking to him. And he said to him, Son, go on back in there. And the next time you hear the voice say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. What do you want? Speak for your servant heareth. And he went back in the fourth turn and he heard the voice of God. And he said, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And God talked to him and told him that he's going to use him. And he had a message for Samuel that he had to deliver to Eli. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about a God who still talks to His people today. But some of us are so busy, we don't even know the voice of God when God speaks. I had a man who come into my last meeting who was a former businessman. He went to the hospital, the doctors examined him, and the doctors told him he had 30 days to live. He was an alcoholic. His liver was completely gone. He didn't know God. He was an atheist, if anything. He said, well, if I ain't got but 30 days to live, I'm going to live it up for 30 days. He had a Cadillac convertible. He had money in the bank. And he said, I'm going to give the greatest 30-day blast I ever had. And he went out and bought a case of whiskey and started drinking like he never drank before. That's the reason why his liver was gone. And he said he was in his Cadillac convertible with the top down. And he was trying to find some drinking music on the radio. And when he turned it on, all of a sudden, here comes this Holy Ghost preacher by the name of R.W. Schambach on the radio. And he said he almost had an accident. He reached up to try to shut the radio off and he couldn't do it. And he had to put 
put the whiskey in his lap and pull over to the side of the road. But when he pulled over the side of the road, something got a hold of him and he couldn't turn the, the station. And he sat there and listened to me preach. I was telling a story of how God performed a miracle in another person's life. Tears began to run down his face. He said, Lord, I never met you. But he said, if what this man is saying is true, he said, I'm asking you to heal me. He said, as I put my hand on the radio and when that man prays the prayer of faith, if you're really real and there is a God in heaven, I'm asking you to give me what this man has and the power of God hit him and he said he started talking in another language and didn't even know what the Holy Ghost was. He said he threw out all those bottles of liquor. Every one of them. God sobered him up and he felt like a brand new man. Went back to the doctors and they found a brand new liver on the inside of him. And the doctor says, you're not going to die, but you're going to live. And when he got home to his wife, he told his wife what happened. And she got scared to death of him. She only knew him as an alcoholic. A man who was out running around boozing all the time. And now all he's doing is talking in tongues. She didn't know what was wrong. So you know what she did? She took him down to the church where she went. Now I'm not going to mention the church. I wouldn't do that. But when she went down to the church and told the pastor and took her husband with him and wanted to find out what this experience was, the preacher looked at him and he heard him talking this language. The preacher said, Oh, he's demon possessed. Why, well, even the church don't even know when God does something. Are you listening to me? They started laying hands on him to try to cast the devil out of him. And he said, got so discouraged, he said, my Lord. He said, why would God give me a devil? I ain't, I never even known him. I, he All I know is he healed me. And he gave me this thing. And this preacher's calling it a devil. And he said, he got so discouraged, he went back to the bar. And he ordered another drink. He hadn't drank it yet. But while he was there, he was talking to some of his drinking buddies. And you know who the drinking buddies were? Backslidden Pentecostal folks. And he began to tell them the experience that he had with God. And one of them men knocked a drink out of his hand and said, My God, don't you know what that thing is you got? That's the Holy Ghost. God called you to preach, man. Get out of this bar. Ha <laughs> ha! The church didn't even know what a religious experience was. He received something from God. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. But it took an old backslider living for the devil to tell him what it was. God is looking for men and women today who can detect the voice of God. Here am I, Lord. Send me. And I want you to know God is still speaking to people today. God will speak to you through the Word of God. That's why you need to hear the Word. God speaks through the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. God speaks through prophecy. He speaks in a still, small voice. That's why you got to get alone with God into the very inner darkness where the thickness of the dark is. Nobody's allowed in there but you and Jesus. And get alone with Him and get quiet and be still and know and you will hear the the voice of God and he will transform your life can you raise your hands and shout amen with me somebody not only will you get a revelation but you will hear the voice of God and all these four treasures that you will find in the thick darkness they are related one to another when you have a revelation and when you hear the voice of God It'll transform your life. God's getting ready to use you in a supernatural way. Raise your hands and shout amen with me, somebody. Thus saith the Lord to His anointed. That's God talking to us. And I'm on the seventh point. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Not only does He give us a revelation... Not only does He allow us the privilege of hearing His voice, but thirdly, He gives us His Word. Number three. These are all related to one another. A revelation, the voice of God, and the Word of God. The Word of God came to Samuel. Jesus 
use the Word. He is the Word, the Logos. There's two segments. When you look the Word up, the Logos, in 1 John, the first chapter of John, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh, the Christos, the Christ. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But there's another title to the Word. When you have reference to the Word, it's the Rhema Word. And I believe that Jesus used this Word. That's why we are to hide that Word in our hearts. And when we store it in our hearts, the Holy Ghost will dip down in and bring it to our remembrance so that we can stand on that Word and see the power that is in the Word of God. Can you say Amen? I've seen myself confessing some of the Word of God that I don't even know. I have never committed it to memory. I can't memorize. I don't even know my own telephone number. It's hard for me to remember. But I can hide that Word in the heart. And when I need it, the Holy Ghost just reaches down in the treasure of that heart and picks it out. And before long, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins to speak. How many of you know what I'm talking about? The Word! And I'll tell you, beloved, this is one of the great treasures that God has given to every one of us as His children. If ever we needed the Word of God, we need it today. I said, we need it today. That's why you need to hide that Word in your heart. Jesus, even though He was the Logos, even though He was the Word, one of these days He's going to mount a great white charger. He's going to take off His priestly garments and He's coming back with ten thousands of His saints. In one thigh will be written the King of Kings and in the other thigh will be written the Word of God. Are you listening to me? It was Jesus Himself. After He received the gift of the Holy Ghost, He was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He met him head on. And I want you to know, every one of you that are under this tent tonight, if you've never had a battle with the devil, get ready. You're going to have to face him. But there's only one weapon that God has given to every one of us that we can put the devil where he belongs. Paul tells about it in the 6th chapter of Ephesians. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, and against powers, and against wicked spirits in high places. But he said, put on the whole armor of God, that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He said, put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your loins girt about with truth. Your feet shod with the preparation of the the gospel of peace. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God. And above all, take the shield of faith. And with that shield of faith, you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And having done all, you'll be able to stand. Because you've learned how to put your faith to work. And you've learned how to use the sword of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. I believe this is one of the greatest tragedies in the church today. Because we don't know how to use the Word. I said we don't know how to use the Word. Jesus was skilled in using the Word. When the devil come out against him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus said, Satan, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, that I might hide your word in my heart. You'll get this truth. You're not healed because a preacher tells you you're healed. But you're healed because the word says so. Pretty soon you're going to be seeing a picture of a little baby that was born with spinal bifida. Parents came to my last meeting with that little baby. The spine was outside the body. Born outside the body with a water head. Doctor said it would never live. The doctor damaged the brain of that child by hitting the head on delivery on one of the delivery tables. Blood gushed out. Baby turned black and blue. Doctor said it would never live. 
But the devil's a liar. He flew that baby into one of my meetings and I held that baby in my arms in the name of Jesus for 20 minutes. I put that baby back into the arms of that daddy. And I said, God has healed your baby. The head was still big. Took that baby back to the doctor and the doctor said, you should have never taken this baby out of the hospital. This baby's worse. The man said, that's what I thought. But the preacher said, he's healed. He said, he's a crazy preacher. He said, that's what I thought. And he's a coal miner in western Pennsylvania. He went into the coal mines, and while he was there, Jesus came, and he heard his voice. Hear me. Jesus spoke to him and said, Son, why are you doubting me? I have healed your baby. He heard his voice. He heard his voice. He threw the pick and shovel down in that coal mine and got up and called his wife and said, Honey, get dressed. I'm coming by to pick you up. We're going to the hospital and get the baby. Jesus just stopped by the coal mine and said, I healed your baby. Do you know what the wife said? The wife said, I know it, darling. He stopped by here first to tell me, and I'm already dressed. And they went back, and the doctor said, Have you been talking to that preacher? He said, No, I've been talking to the man. God, when he tells you, it is done. Raise your hands and shout, Amen. I'm reading from the 45th chapter of Isaiah. Stay with me, I won't be long. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed. The perfect promises. I'm on that seventh promise, and this is the last one. Listen. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. And we found out that there's a fourfold treasure in darkness. First of all, there's a revelation of God, the voice of God, the Word of God, and then we come to the final one, and you need to know this the will of God. You will only find this in the thick darkness where God is. You can find the will of God for your life. Are you listening to me? I'm not called to preach just because somebody laid hands on me. I found out the will of God for myself. You're not a preacher because you graduated from a Bible college or a cemetery. I mean seminary. You can graduate from a university and you can come out a bookkeeper. You can graduate from a university, take your pre-med training and graduate and you can, you can become a doctor. You can study pre-law and go through the required courses and come out of the university and graduate on the honor roll. Pass the bar examination and you can hang out your shingle and say, I'm a lawyer. But you can graduate from every theological school in the country. And when you come out, it'll never make a preacher out of you. Only God can make a preacher. Listen to me, beloved. Every one of you tonight. God has a will for you. There is a perfect will of God. And there's a permissive will of God. But I made up my mind I want God's best for me. Some people are content just to get by. I've heard them say it. Lord, if I can just get to heaven on the skin of my teeth. You ain't got no skin on your teeth. Some of you ain't got no teeth. I just made up my mind a long time ago, I don't want to sneak into heaven. Bless God, I want them angels to stand at attention when I get coming in there. Because there's one thing I want to hear, that's it. It'll be worth it all then. Just one thing I want to hear, well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter in to the joys of the Lord. How many of you can say amen to that? Beloved, don't let anybody tell you what the will of God is for you. Find out what it is for yourself. You can put all these four things together for yourself. And you will find them in no textbooks. You won't find them in a seminar meeting. 
You can't put all these things together, point number one, number two, number three, number four, an automatic conclusion. You've got to find it for yourself. When you shut the world out, shut the husband out, shut the wife out, shut the kids out, and shut the door and get alone with God, you'll get a revelation from God. You'll hear the voice of God. You'll know the Word of God. And you'll find out what the will of God is. Hallelujah. Listen to me. When I was a young man, I had a scholarship to the university for football and for basketball. In my day, they didn't grow basketball players like they're growing them today. Lord, they're like stalks of corn now. But I had a scholarship to a university and I wanted to fulfill that thing, but God messed up my future. He knows how to do it, don't He? He called me to preach. And I rebelled. I'm a rebel. I ain't saying that because I'm from the South. But I rebelled against the call of God. Don't you look so sanctified. Most of you here rebelled against God. I knew what the will of God was for me. I knew what it was. But I rebelled. I said, I'm not going to preach. So you know what I did? I joined the Navy. I said, I'll show you I ain't going to preach. I joined the Navy. I thought, I thought I could get away from God by joining the Navy. Got to sign to a destroyer. Put that thing on a shakedown cruise to Bermuda. And guess what? When I got to Bermuda, he was there. I said, oh, no. I thought he was just in America. Went down to Panama and threw the locks. Guess what? He was there. I said, ain't I ever going to get rid of him? Went out into the Pacific, Wake Island, went out into Midway, into Leyte Gulf, in the Philippines, Iwo Jima, Okinawa. He was there. I said, my God, what are you doing over here? This is our enemy. This was at the end of World War II and we were scheduled to escort a hospital ship into Nagasaki where they dropped that atom bomb. I said, I know he won't be there because that's our enemy. We pulled into the Japanese bay. And guess what? He was there. You know what I found out? It was a heavy price to pay. You can run from him. But you can't hide. I fell on the ground in Japan and I said, I give up! I surrender all. God said, that's what I've been waiting to hear. I surrender all. And I went back on that ship and started preaching from a five-inch gun mount. That was my pulpit. And I started giving the altar call. And some of them buddies that... I was at sea with, come to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior on that destroyer. I knew that God called me to preach. I'm not a preacher because my grandma paid my education in college. I'm not grandma's preacher. I'm Jesus' preacher. Are you listening to me? I'm in the will of God doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't lower myself to be President of the United States. I'm in the highest calling that this world ever knew. Transforming lies from the powers of darkness into the kingdom of light. Shout yes with me somebody. I know what the will of God is for you as a child of God. I know what the will of God is for you that are without Christ. The will of God for you is to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. You that are sick and diseased and afflicted, I know what the will of God is for you. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elder of the church. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. I know the will of God. God wants you well. I've read his last will and testament, and I know what his will is. He'll give you a revelation of that will so that you can know the voice of God. 
so that the word of God can come alive in your heart so that you can be the recipient of his blessing hear me I know what the will of God is for every one of you that have never been baptized with the Holy Ghost when you get the Holy Ghost you're gonna talk in another language God said in the last day I'm gonna pour out my spirit upon all flesh all flesh I say I know what the will of God is for you about the baptism of the Holy Ghost because all flesh this is for you and tonight I'm gonna lay my hands on you in the name of Jesus and I'm gonna command you to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost God's gonna baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire and you're going to know that you have received him because you're going to speak in another language this is the initial physical evidence that you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost Jesus said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and all Samaria and then to the uttermost parts of the earth and these signs shall follow them that believe and you're going to have some signs following you this is the will of God raise your hands and shout amen with me somebody